Hello everybody, this is Carlos and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to learn how to access and de-access a podocath, which is an implanted central vascular device. Next thing, we're going to gather our supplies. We have our podocath needle. We're going to have our dressing tray so we can set up a sterophil, the dressing to cover our podocath, Chlorhexidine sticks as an antiseptic cleaning solution, our sterile gloves, our needleless connector to attach to our uh, needle, and saline flashes. All right, next we're going to assess the patient's portica size by inspection and palpation. But before that, we're going to do a few housekeeping items. We're going to make sure that we perform hand hygiene. We're also make sure that the patient is a correct patient by using at least two positive patient identifiers, including checking their ID band and explaining the procedure to the patient. Next, when we're doing any procedures that include accessing central lines or portocath, always make sure the patient is wearing a mask uh, so that they're minimizes the risk of contamination at the site. And our patient is already wearing a mask, so we're good to go. Let's start by exposing the patient after we have explained the procedure. And we're gonna start by doing a visual inspection. Sometimes if the podcast has been accessed before, you can see needle punctures before. The best way is always to go by palpation and you just have to palpate around and you will feel a little raised bump. Now on some patients who are a little bit more um, skinny, for example, or they have less subcutaneous tissue, you might actually be able to see the portal cath visually in addition to the palpation. Uh, for most patients, you cannot see it, but you can definitely palpate it. And the needle is gonna go right in the middle of the device. You just have to guesstimate the needle uh, in the center part, which is why palpating and having a better feel for it will allow you to see where really is the center of the hub and in this case for this patient it's right here so we're gonna start by cleaning it our next step is to clean the site with chlorhexidine which is what I'm gonna do always follow your institutions policies and procedures, but the rule of thumb is clean it 15 seconds each way and you're gonna use the hashtag method, okay? And make sure you apply some good friction so that it actually provides some good cleaning. We're gonna leave it for about 15, 30 seconds for it to clean and also dry. Chlorhexidine enhances the ability to kill bacteria when we allow it to dry, which is what it's doing right now. Next, as the chlorhexidine is drying up, we're gonna set up our sterophil. We're gonna start by opening our dressing tray. We're gonna grab this and we're gonna set up a sterile fill. Remember, one inch around. You can touch it with your hands. That is considered non-sterile. All right, the rest of the stuff really not necessary, but we keep it there just in case. We're gonna put our tanks in there. Next, we're gonna drop everything into our sterile field. The next thing is gonna go in, our needle. Open it up and drop it in. Next up, we're gonna drop in our dressing. Again, open it up, drop it in. our blue cap and both of our sterile saline flashes. So one, and the last one over here. Next, we're gonna put on our sterile gloves. We're gonna start by doing hand hygiene. Now I have my sterile gloves right here. Okay, this is the size of the sterile gloves. Open it up. Lay it down and make sure you open the package. Because if you just go straight from here, it might be a little challenging. Good. 
So we're going to start by grabbing one from here. Put it on. The next one, you're going to scoop it up like this. Okay, scoop it up. And it goes into your other hand. And you're going to try to ideally remove any jewelry, watches and stuff. And now we have our stereo, uh, our stereo gloves and we're ready to go. Now that we have our stereo gloves on, let's set up our equipment that we have. Let's start by setting up our port cat needle. Do not remove this white part just yet, okay? We are going to undo this part at the back and we're gonna attach our needleless connector first. Once our needleless connectors attach, we are going to flush the whole thing, okay? Pull down to break the seal, slowly push up until you see a few drops. Push it in, twist it on, and really all you need is about 0.3 cc's until you see one or two drops coming up. So we're gonna do that. There, you don't need much. So now the line is actually prime, okay? Our chlorhexidine has already dried up. We have our dressing in there and we're good to start with our insertion. All right, now we're ready to insert the portocath. We're gonna explain the procedure to the patient and we're gonna grab our whole needle, including the flush, okay? So we're gonna confirm, remember we cleaned this part already, right? So you can see right here, it hasn't moved, just to do a double confirmation. Next, what you're gonna do is you're gonna remove the cap from the needle, okay? And you see that the, the needle is actually curved, that's why it's called a non-coring needle, okay? We're going to affix the part of the skin and then we're gonna go 90 degrees and you're just gonna go blind. Uh, try to go at the center and push. Okay, this is probably the part that's gonna be the most uncomfortable for the patient. Do not remove this part yet. At this point, you want to make sure that you do have any blood return, okay? So we're gonna gently pull back and I'm gonna show you if right now, for example, it's a seven cc's. Let's see if there's any fluid that comes up. All right, imagine if that was blood, then this would have been filled up with blood. You don't need to um, aspirate the whole line for blood. As long as you see some blood, you're good, okay? Now, let's do some troubleshooting. Let's say that you inserted this and suddenly there is no blood return uh, and stuff. What do you do? Well, we're gonna do a couple of things. Let me zoom out. So the first thing, team, that you're gonna do is you're gonna ask the patient to raise the arm or whichever side the portal cath is in. Ask them to raise the arm, okay? And ask them to turn their head. Ask the patient to turn their head and ask them to cough. What that does is sometimes the line is actually right up against the vessel inside. We can see it, right? And sometimes when we do that, as the patient raises their arm and they're turning their head and coughing, you are going to gently aspirate. And very likely, you're gonna get blood return then. And that's usually what uh, you need to do in an event where when you first access, there's no blood return. Now, next step. Now that the port cut is in, this is the part that there's a slight variation depending on your hospital. Some hospitals allow you to flush the heparin into the patient, assuming that the patient doesn't have any sensitivity to heparin, that they're not at risk for heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, or that there's no other contraindication. Some other hospitals require you to waste about five cc's of uh, blood just to get rid of the heparin inside. Our institution allows you to flush the heparin in because this heparin is very, very low concentration. It's the 100 units per one milliliter concentration, which is the lowest amount in uh, heparin, okay? So we are just going to flush, okay? In this case, I'm just gonna flush. And when you flush, team, you are going to use the push, pause. Well, let me get rid of this bubble. This. In a real patient, you will not get any air inside the line, right? So push, pause, push, pause, push, pause. This is the method to flush any central lines. If you don't flush it with this push, pause, push, pause, your lines will clot despite putting heparin inside. So make sure you, uh, make sure that you put in, you flush it uh, the same way that you learn in nursing school. Push, pause, push, pause with 10 cc's, okay? 
uh, if it's not sufficient, try 20 uh, as well. Once we have flushed it in, then this top part here, team, can be removed, okay? And the way you remove this is, let me just zoom in. I'm just gonna pinch here, and it just comes up like that, okay? Now, let's affix our dressing in. These are the only central lines that it's okay to have tenting. And by tenting, I mean that your dressing will be raised up like this, okay? And the reason why is because as you can see, the portal calf is quite chunky, right? Uh, in a PIV or in any other central lines, uh, your pig lines, your IJs, for example, you should not have a tenting uh, like this. You can also use other type of dressings. You can use central line dressings if that's uh, something that, uh, if the patient's more diaphoretic and stuff, you wanna make sure that we put our date and time, right, of when we, access uh, access this and we're just going to put it here most institution including ours the podcast needs to be changed every seven days once it's been accessed uh, check in your academic uh, check on your hospital um, policies to see when they need to be uh, changed but for us we change it every seven days at this point, if you're going to use your podcast right away, you can use it as a central line to draw blood. You can use it to give medications, anything like to uh, give for the patient. If you are not going to give anything immediately, um, in, within the next four to eight hours, for example, and this has been accessed, the podcast must be heparin lock. Now that we have accessed our portal cath, it can be used as a central line to give medications or to draw blood. Once a patient's therapy has been completed or the patient needs to go home or is discharged home, for example, we need to deaccess it. Let's see how the deactivation of the portal cath looks like. To remove our portal cath, let's start by gathering some of our supplies. We're gonna use a chlorhexidine stick. We're gonna need some saline flushes and we're going to need heparin locks. Now for the podcast in our institution, we lock our podcast with 500 units or five cc's. So in the heparins, they usually come in 300 units per three milliliters. So you need to grab two and out of the two, you will always waste one milliliter because each one has three and we only need five. So that's everything we need for now. Now, prior to removing our portal cath, we're gonna do a few housekeeping things. Make sure that the patient has a mask on. Make sure that we perform our hand hygiene, which I just did, and we're gonna put on gloves. We're gonna start by removing the dressing. Now, when you remove the dressing team, always make sure you stabilize the portal cath so that it doesn't accidentally get pulled out as you pull out the dressing, okay? Now, sometimes you might have the dressing stuck to this part. It's okay because this is all gonna come out. Next, we're gonna clean the site, okay? Just gonna go around it, okay? Just gonna go around, make sure we do a good clean. After we have done that, we're going to flush our line one more time. Make sure that there's no clots or nothing stick, staying behind so that it doesn't clot for our patient. Make sure we give it a good Clean. We're going to use our saline flushes, okay, again, we're going to use a push-pause, 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 push-pause technique. Once we have flushed it up with our saline, we are going to heparin lock it, okay? And the way you're going to lock it is, is for the heparin, you don't need to push-pause, the heparin just needs to go in. Now the heparin is going to prevent any clot from forming a clot that have not formed. Once a clot have already formed, heparin becomes less effective against that. And we're gonna do 500. So we're gonna waste one cc, okay? So this amount of heparin, remember you need to check with your institution, but in our hospital, we only use five cc's or 500 units. All right, so now that we have flushed it and heparin lock it, now we can remove our line. The proper technique to remove our line team is not to just grab it and yank it out. Please don't do that because that's extremely painful for the patient. You're gonna grab two fingers, stabilize the portal calf. You're gonna use another finger and you're gonna grab to this little part that's sticking out and you're gonna pull up 
almost like a can of pop, okay, like this. And you're gonna hear the click. Ready? One, two, three. And then this goes into a sharps container. And that's how we access and deaccess a podcast. If you ever have to do this or if you're unsure, always check with your advanced practice nurse educator for support and guidance. Thank you very much.